This is a quick how-to video covering the basic operations of the Bronco Pan. You've by now spent at least a week printing and assembling your camera, so I'm going to try and keep this short but still thorough. Mounting the strap. I suggest you use a strap that has fabric ends rather than metal connectors. The strap lugs are big and strong, but are made out of plastic, which is softer than metal. If you've ever seen a beautifully brassed camera from the 1970s, you'll know that over time metal strap connectors can really rub and scrape camera bodies. I would avoid using key rings or metal clips to attach the strap as they will chew through the plastic lugs over time. A fabric strap end like this one will work great for years to come. Mounting a lens. To mount a lens to the Bronco Pan, rotate the outer mount locking ring so that the little bump is vertical in the 12 o'clock position. Press your lens firmly into the mounting hole by the helix and make sure that it is seated in the cutouts in the body for the lens mounting tabs. Pull up slightly on the mounting lock ring and rotate it 60 degrees clockwise to lock your lens into place. Mounting a cable release. To mount a cable release, thread the tip of the release down through the handle and screw the tip of the shutter release into the cable mount on your lens. Mounting a tripod screw. The Bronco Pan is equipped with a standard 3 8 by 16 large size tripod socket on the lens axis. If you don't have a standard large size tripod mounting screw on your tripod, you can use a 3 8 to 1 quarter inch tripod mount adapter. Just screw it into the base of the camera. You can use some cyanoacrylate glue or heat from a soldering iron to lock it in place, although this should not be necessary. The adapter should fit snugly. Mounting a finder. You can mount a 3D printed finder in either cold shoe of your camera. To minimize parallax, I like to mount the finder on the center shoe rather than the left shoe. Files for all available Mamiya Press lenses are included in the file package for the Bronco Pan. Once you've printed one out, I would recommend sanding the bottom of the foot and adding a small piece of gaffer's tape so that the finder will slide snugly into the body and not fall out during use. To use the finder, make sure that your eye is in the correct position by aligning all four sides of the rear hole of the viewfinder with all four sides of the hole in the front of the viewfinder. You should not be able to see the inner walls of the finder when properly using it. If you can see them, you're too close to the finder and your angle of view will be too wide. If you cannot see the front opening sides, through the rear hole of the finder, you're too far away from the finder and you will have too small an angle of view. This might take some getting used to, but once you figure out how far to hold your eye from the finder, you should have no trouble framing quickly. There are no optical elements in the finder, so you should be able to easily shoot with both eyes open, perfect for quick use in street photography. Loading the film. To load the film, depress the locking tab on the left side of the camera body and open the door. Depress the film spacing latch lever and rotate the sprocket wheel until the frame counter dial reads 19 and clicks into place. Now make sure that the rewind collar is rotated clockwise as far as it will go. You might need to turn the wind lever just a bit as you do this to get the gears to mesh internally. Now place the film leader tab into the take up spool and while holding pressure against the film with your thumb, turn the wind lever half a turn to tightly wrap the leader onto the spool. Bring the film cassette over to the left hand side of the body and seat it on the rewind fork at the top of the chamber. You may need to rotate the rewind knob just a bit to get the slot in the fork to line up with and plug into the hole in the end of the spool in the cassette. Turn the rewind knob until the film is taut against the film gate and make sure the sprocket wheels are seated in the sprocket holes of the film. Close the door and depress the frame spacing latch lever and begin winding just a little. Release the lever and continue winding until the frame counter catches and stops at 20. Repeat once more to frame 1. You're now ready to take a picture. Every time you take a picture, depress the film counter latch lever slightly, begin winding, release the lever, and continue winding to the next frame. I'll go over how to use Mamiya Press lenses in a bit, but now since we're looking at how to wind the Bronco Pan, let's move on to rewinding the film first. Rewinding the film. When you're done shooting your roll of film and are ready to rewind, rotate the rewind collar all the way counterclockwise and use the rewind knob on the top left of the camera body to rewind the film. You will turn this knob clockwise. As you rewind, you can see the film moving through the transport mechanism because this frame counter will spin. There is no need to press the latch lever during rewind operation as the latch lever only catches in one direction. You will hear an audible click from the latch lever and see it moving just a bit each time a frame passes backwards through the film gate. Once the clicking stops and the frame counter no longer spins, you have rewound the film entirely into the cassette. You can open the door and remove it. 
Now let's look at how to use a Mamiya press lens. Mamiya made lenses that will fit the Bronco pan from 50 to 250 millimeters. They're all pretty great and do just about the same things, although they look a little different. First, every lens has a little tab to set the aperture. This is simple enough, although a little small for my taste sometimes. Just rotate it until the tab indicates your desired aperture. Also, every lens has a built-in shutter and shutter speed setting ring. To set the shutter speed, just rotate the ring until your desired shutter speed aligns with the setting mark. To cock the shutter, push the shutter cocking lever clockwise while looking at the front of the lens. This usually has a nice large knob at the end of it. I'm not going to get into how to CLA these lenses here, but you should know that they're very well made, robust, and easy to work on. If you have any doubts about the actual speed of your shutter, you should check out my video on building simple shutter speed testers for about $5. It's also a fun project and way simpler than building a Bronco pan. Now on to focusing. Every lens has a focusing helix with a focusing scale. If you have calibrated your flange distance correctly in the assembly process, you should be able to achieve excellent focus by using the scale on the helix. You can use an external rangefinder to measure the distance of your subject and transfer the reading to your lens. You can also use a string with knots at predetermined distances and one end attached to your camera. I recommend through the tripod screw or strap lug. This might be useful for a fast close-up portraiture with a cooperative subject. You can even pretend that you're a Hollywood DP and use a tape measure. The way I like to use the camera is to set hyperfocal distance using the depth of field scale and depending upon my aperture, focus from infinity to some closer distance indicated on the scale of my lens. For each aperture, there are two corresponding marks on the left and right of the focusing indicator mark. These will tell you what is effectively in focus in front and behind your selected plane of focus for that aperture. For example, at f16, my 65mm lens, if I focus the lens at about 9 feet, everything from infinity down to a little less than 5 feet will be in focus. I find this to be a really fast and effective way to shoot street photos without having to do any setting adjustments at the time when I want to take a picture. Just preset the shutter and aperture, set the focus so that everything from 5 feet to infinity is in focus, hold the camera at my side, and when I see something, just raise the camera to my eye, frame, and take a picture. Okay, I think that should cover all of the basic operations of the camera. Remember to have fun and take some great pictures. I can't wait to see them. Thank you so much.